deep backspin ball deep to the forehand, followed by two topspin balls. So it's going to be a deep backspin ball here, followed by a topspin, and then another topspin deep to the forehand, followed by a little break. Backspin, and then topspin, and then topspin. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. That's a great demonstration by chance. You can see that he's waiting on the backspin and then looping, and then he's really focused on hitting the topspin in front. Now, using this drill, I want to emphasize one really important principle, and that is being able to change the speed of your hit. You see, some people, when they play with the robot and the ball is coming at the same speed, they themselves become a robot by hitting the same speed, same speed, same speed. So it's going to give him now a backspin serve to the forehand. He's going to loop, and then it's going to be a topspin ball. He's going to play like slow loop, and then he's going to play a faster loop on the third ball. So even though the second and third ball are coming out similarly, he's going to work on changing his own speed. Okay, so it's backspin, and then topspin, topspin. But I want you to see how he hits a driving loop on that third one. Backspin, topspin, and goes. Yes. More weight transfer on that third ball. Excellent. Yes. Very, very good. Now, uh, you can also take the same exact drill and you can hit mirror. And then what happens with mirror? It reverses it, so now it's going to the backhand. So this backspin serve has a little bit of side spin. It's going to be kind of curving in this zone, and then it's going to give him two balls there. So he does the backhand loop against backspin, and then two backhand loops against topspin. So same exact drill, but we mirrored it for backhand. Excellent. So that's one thing that I just need to continue to emphasize to you is that you can take one drill and you can keep adjusting it. For my practice session, if I practice for 45 minutes, I'll oftentimes only do like two drills in the 45 minutes, but I'll make adjustments like this. So maybe I'll take the same one and I'll have the serve go there and then maybe one topspin ball here or one topspin ball here. And then I'll work on maybe serve deep to my middle transition point and then one here, one here. So take a drill, make it harder or easier by just dragging those balls around and then also adjusting BPM here, which is balls per minute. Okay. Our final drill for this session is going to be a challenging one. It's with shuffle placement. It's deep backspin serve anywhere, followed up by two topspin balls anywhere. So all three of these balls are anywhere. So similar to the last drill, but it's completely random. Here we go. Final drill for this session. Good. I really like this demonstration. And one last comment that I need to make before we wrap up on this session. A lot of my online robot users, when they're not thinking about the location, they play way too many balls to the middle here. So we oftentimes will set up targets deep on the table to practice hitting deep. For this particular one, what I'm going to have Coach Chance do is I'm going to have him play every ball deep to the back end, except occasionally when he can hit a really, really strong shot, he's going to hit deep to the forehand. So he's not just knocking the ball up to the forehand when he's surprised, but he's intentional about choosing to hit to the wide forehand. So what does he need to focus on? His own adjustability or where he's hitting to? Definitely his own adjustability. And he's going to play the ball safely here. And occasionally he's going to play deep to the forehand. But it's decisive. It's intentional when he changes deep to the forehand. Here we go.
Excellent. Now, sometimes when a student starts adding too many factors, random here, backspin here, topspin here, I got to hit here, I got to hit here, it gets overwhelming. It, it, it truly does. So what do you do? If you get overwhelmed, simplify it and maybe make all three balls go to just the forehand. Or delete ball two and ball three and just work on just your opening loop with forehand or just your opening loop with backhand. Once you get the confidence back for that, then add all the other balls. Don't feel pressure for me that you have to make it this complicated all the time. It's just if you're going to use these skills in games, you're going to have to be able to do it. I've worked with hundreds of people online with lessons, and a lot of people just work on one ball, one ball, one ball, and they'll just do that an hour a day, and they're scratching their head and sending me emails like, Samson, why isn't my backhand loop working in a match? And it's like, well, because we've isolated it. So in 17 stages of developing a skill, we're literally at stage two. Okay, So as you're able to develop more things and link the shots together, you're going to see more benefit in match play. Thanks for watching. Good job, Jim.